retro rock plays everything. Hey there, real gamers. Retro Rob here, and today we're going to take a look at the game hat for Raspberry Pi. Please note that this does not include the Raspberry Pi device. So if you order it, you know, you're, you're going to want to order a Raspberry Pi along with it. If you happen to get a zero, you're going to need an extra cable. I'll try to link that down below if I remember to. Uh, but if you got like a Raspberry Pi 3, you're going to be just fine. Uh, I am going to note that you can use more than one device with this, so I'm not going to cover gaming a whole lot on it. I'm just going to talk about the construction of the device itself, uh, largely because your performance might vary depending on a whole lot of different things. Uh, let's just get started taking a look at it. All right, and here is the front of the game hat. Two speakers right on the top. The buttons feel kind of weird. I mean, they're not bad or anything, uh, but they are springy, I guess is the word for it. And uh, just a little bit weird. That said, they play just fine. Got a start and select button, and you have this giant analog stick. Uh, please note that this stick is the only thing you have to control games with. There is no D-pad on this particular model. So if you are a hater of joysticks, this is probably not the device for you. These huge speakers here are actually more tinny than you would think, but they are very loud. Looking at the top, you've also got a couple of shoulder buttons, which is useful if you're going to do any PlayStation emulation. Let's look at the bottom real quick. At the bottom, you can just see the battery peeking out. That battery is a 18650 flat top battery. Do not get a button top battery for this. I don't know why that's not written anywhere, but it uses a flat top, not a button top. And we're gonna look really close at the construction here and the wafers. This is the top level, small post. This is the board facing down. And then we got the large post. Then we got the bottom of the unit right here. And then a screw. So note when you're assembling it because they don't include any instructions, at least mine didn't, that is the assembly order of the wafers on the board or uh, you know, the, the wafers on the device. Looking on the side here, you can see my Raspberry Pi, which is not included inside here, hanging upside down. Note, this is where the USB ports show up, and you're gonna need those because you're gonna need a keyboard to configure this thing when you're done. Right here is the battery indicator light. There are four of them. I am down to three now, which is a bummer. My battery is kind of a knockoff battery and not very good, so I only get like, I don't even get like two hours out of it. But you could get better with a real decent battery. I'm gonna go around to the top now, and what you can see here is this little piece comes with it, and zoom in a little bit. It connects to your Raspberry Pi, and then here's the board that comes with the unit. So. This does a little connection that connects it to the screen, which is included, it's on the board. On off switch, USB, this is for charging, so you wanna plug into here to charge the device. Going along the side here, and by the way, it's always open like this. So that's something to note. It has kind of this, uh, this punk look to it, which I like, but you may or may not. These buttons right here control the screen and volume. And I'll show you that in a minute. In fact, I'll show you it right now. Let's look at the front. And I'm gonna hit the first of those buttons. This is a complaint about it. Uh, some people don't notice the buttons on the side and they think there's no volume control. There is volume control. You get to it from here. So you hit this top button and then you can move it around with the middle two buttons and select. And then I hit the bottom button to get back out again. And there we go. Not bad. You can download a Raspberry Pi image that is specifically for the game hat from their website. I'll put a link down below there. And this is what it looks like. Uh, you can definitely do some upgrading and modification to it. It is just Raspbian, so you can edit it up as you would like. These are some of the emulators I have installed. I'll show you one of the emulators real quick just to show you what it plays like. But I do want to show you uh, where is it? I have a lot of emulators on here. I do want to show you, where is it? The settings for this. You got Bluetooth, configuration edit, 
And all these are here. The most important thing to note is, you see this IP and Wi-Fi? You're going to want to set up the Wi-Fi because that's how you get games on this device. So go into the Wi-Fi, make sure you've got your keyboard ready and it will load a little setup program and you just want to walk through this to uh, to do the configuration the first time. Make sure you're on your Wi-Fi. I'm going to exit real quick. There we go. And then you want to go to show IP. Hey, look at there's me. Hi. <laughs> you're going to go to show IP and this is where you find out where you're going to FTP to. Uh, to go drop your ROMs because you need to use FTP to drop your ROMs onto the system or SFTP or SSH or, or whatever the heck. But anyway, uh, if you guys are really interested in a video on how to do this, I know there's a lot of them on the internet, but if you're super interested, I will definitely do a video for it if there's enough requests for it. All right, but anyway, all the config stuff is here. Pretty easy to get to from the interface, but unfortunately, of course, you're going to need a keyboard to be able to do the actual configuration. Thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, or I will go Skynet on your butt. And here we go with some Jumping Flash. I love this game. One of my favorite PlayStation games. I think it was one of the first releases for it, too. And I still like to play it quite a bit. I don't know why. I... I think that this is one of the earliest examples of a platformer in 3D that actually worked. And it's because of this mechanic right here where they show you where you're jumping to, so you have a good idea of where you're jumping. Anyway, you can hear the sound, and it, it isn't like my recording. It really is, it, it's a pretty tinny sound system, but it is very loud. I've only got it about halfway up. so. <laughs> It, it can get really loud, and that's kind of a nice plus, but again, you might want to use a headset with it uh, in general gameplay just because. There we go. Another jet pod. The controls do work really well. If you like joysticks, you're probably going to like this joystick. It's got a pretty decent like mid-range throw to it, so it doesn't feel like you're playing with a stinted joystick like you do with a lot of portables. That's really pretty nice. Like it. Uh, gameplay, at least on my Raspberry Pi 3B, pretty darn good and pretty smooth. And again, well, real quick, I'll just put in an N64 game just to show you. But the emulators in Raspberry Pi in general are pretty advanced uh, and a little bit less buggy, I would say, than their Android counterparts. And their, um, their um, Dingux counterparts so you're gonna get a little bit better emulation off of this kind of thing as a general rule using the raspberry uh raspberry pi 3 uh then you will off of many of the open dingux units and the android units but note that there's only the one joystick and no d-pad so you know there's a trade you're making here all right so here is some star fox for you and this runs pretty well. I mean, nice and smooth. Again, you know, it's a function of what Android device you put in here. So you got to kind of be careful about that. But it does run pretty well. And I think it looks really nice on this screen. Ooh. One thing I am going to note is that if you get like a bright white screen or something like that, there's some definite noticeable tear i'm not seeing it right now but you definitely do get some screen tear with the screen on some games and in fact this one if you get like a, a bright screen you'll definitely get a little bit so just want to note it if you're one of those people that really cannot stand screen tear you're probably gonna complain a little bit about this screen Ooh. do a barrel i would but I can't remember how. <laughs> Come on. I don't think I'm going to make this. Ah.
Whoa. All right, let's get a verdict on this. So what's the verdict on the game hat? In general, I do like it. The construction of it's pretty decent, even though it doesn't provide any side protection whatsoever. Uh, the screen is nice and bright, although there is some tearing. The sound, very loud, but again, very little bass on it. So it's a, it, you know, the, the tone is way up on this. So it does get that kind of sound at really high uh, audio levels. I found that the joystick worked really good. I grew up with joysticks, so I don't have any complaints, but those of you who love D-pads might not be the thing for you. Love the buttons, even though they're kind of weird looking, they worked really, really well. Love the concept, I think for about 50 bucks, it's pretty well worth it, especially if you happen to have a Raspberry Pi laying around that you haven't really been doing anything with, like the one I've got right here. So all in all, for the price, thumbs up. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in a couple days. Bye.